The free energy change, or delta G, is what determines whether a process is favored. Negative delta Gs indicate the favored direction for a chemical reaction. A reaction is spontaneous if delta G is negative. Delta G is composed of delta H and delta S and the temperature, so we need to look at three factors to determine where our negative delta G or favored reactions occur. So let's look at some cases. What if delta H is positive, that is an endothermic reaction? Now that's going up enthalpy hill. And indeed, that doesn't favor it being a spontaneous reaction because a positive delta H tends to make delta G positive. Now, if delta S is negative, that is, the system goes to a more constrained state where there are fewer microstates, a more orderly state, then delta S also is unfavorable because a negative delta S makes the minus T delta S term positive. Remember, temperatures are always positive. So minus T delta S will be positive for negative delta S. So if we look at the overall space and say, well, what about the regions where delta S is negative and delta H is positive? For those conditions, there's no temperature that can make delta G negative. There's no conditions of temperature that can make a reaction that's endothermic and goes to a more constrained state. No conditions of temperature will make that spontaneous. Let's look at a couple other conditions. What if it's exothermic and goes to a less orderly state, that is, more microstates, the energy is more dispersed, both of these favor delta G being negative. Of course, exothermic, delta H is negative. And an increase in entropy, that's a positive delta H times a positive temperature with this minus sign, this term will always be negative, and this term will always be negative. So when delta S is positive and delta H is negative, that's favorable for all temperatures. Delta G will always be negative. And of course, we can look at the other two quadrants. We can look at reactions where delta H is negative and delta S is negative. And of course, those will happen only if T is small. So you have to have a small entropic term, T times delta S. This has to be small and positive to be smaller than the negative delta H to give you an overall negative delta G. Of course, delta S and delta H both positive, an endothermic reaction that goes towards a more dispersed state, those will happen for high temperatures. That is, delta H positive, but you can overcome it as long as you have a high enough temperature and a positive delta S. So we have four quadrants of the Gibbs free energy space and different temperature requirements to have spontaneity or favored chemical reactions in each quadrant.